The needle movers are the things that are going to move the needle quite a bit for not a lot of work. Okay, those are the things that we are talking about where So in terms of what I do with my patients, uh, these are the big needle movers. So the needle movers are the things that are going to move the needle quite a bit for not a lot of work. Okay, those are the things that we are talking about where you look at a patient and you figure out, okay, you really need to focus on sleep, that's gonna be a big needle mover. But within the category of sleep, these are the main things that I will usually talk about with patients, but the big ones, Simple, turning off half the lights in your house. Okay, just a reduction in light hitting the eyes is going to increase melatonin production, or I should say, allow, remove some of the blunting effect of light on melatonin production to restore a higher melatonin production. <clears throat> blue light blocking glasses in the evening. The blue light is going to hit the eye, that's going to stimulate cortisol production and reduce melatonin production. Light does it on its own, so even with the blue light blocking glasses, even though the 5% of red light uh, or blue light that's coming through, light in general still stimulates cortisol and inhibits melatonin, so there's an additive effect with these two and synergistic. These are super easy. You don't have to buy the $150 super ones that are recommended by the biohackers of the world. I won't name names so I don't get sued even more. <laughs> you don't have to have the big ones. There's, there's, one, there's certain technology that's gonna be in the glasses that if you can find a brand that prices it a bit better, the ones I have are about 30, 40 bucks. Okay, most patients can afford that and it's pretty reasonable and they wear it for a week and they know a difference, okay? Nasal breathing protocols. We're gonna talk a lot about nasal breathing protocols shortly here, um, but nasal breathing protocols are uh, a way that we can tap into regulating our autonomic nervous system that's gonna allow a decrease in the sympathetic nervous system, a rise in the parasympathetic nervous system, which is gonna chill and mellow people out, especially those people who their brain is just on overdrive when they try to sleep, okay? Morning sunlight helps ingrain a natural circadian rhythm because that's going to help increase cortisol production. So that is sometimes really beneficial for patients. It's not as big of a needle mover as the other things. And so if I'm prioritizing, it's not always on my list, but if my patient is the type to be like, give me everything you got, I'll do whatever you say. Then it's, hey, go outside and just sit while you have your coffee, do some breathing exercises in the morning and get sunlight on your face. Uh, with that, you don't wanna be sitting inside because you get UV blocking from windows and there's also UV blocking in glasses. So usually I tell patients, sit outside and take your glasses off if you wear glasses. And then um, exercising earlier in the day and also not eating within three hours of bedtime. The big things with these are actually temperature regulation. So one of the things that needs to happen when we go to sleep is our core body temperature needs to drop. If you've eaten recently, your body has a harder time dropping core body temperature. If you've recently exercised, your body has a harder time dropping core temperature. 